Welcome. My name is Allison, and in this video, I'm going to give you a tour of image processing in PixelTable. So PixelTable is a database that understands multimodal data. So that includes video files, audio files, images, and documents. But it's also a powerful orchestration system. So what that means is that it can actually execute code against those kinds of inputs. So you can define transformations using Python to process images, audio files, video files, and documents. And you can do that in an orchestrated way, meaning that Pixel Table knows exactly what your inputs are, what your outputs are, which columns depend on each other. And if a column needs to generate output, like a new image that's been processed, it knows exactly where to put those and how to find them again. So it's a powerful way to build up an AI development pipeline simply by using a table and adding computed columns. In this video, I'm going to walk you through one of our new recipes for how to use pillow functions in Pixel Table. You can find this again by going to our GitHub repository, looking in the Docs folder, and going into our cookbook. Here, I'm going to open up this transform images with pillow operations. And we'll walk through it together. So this notebook includes only built-in functions in Pixel Table. So no additional installs are needed. I'm going to import Pixel Table. And just for the purposes of this demo, I'm going to drop a directory and create a new directory. This is mainly just to keep a clean working space in my Google Colab. I'm going to create a new table. It's called images. It's in the image demo folder. And it has a single column called image. And it's of type pixel table image. I'm going to give it a handle T so I can work with it easily in my notebook. So if I execute that, I can verify that it's a table that's expecting an image, but there's nothing there right now. If I do t.collect, you'll see we have an empty table. So let's change that. Let's insert three rows into our table, three rows inserted. And if I do a t.collect now, you can see that I've got a big bear, some teddy bears, and a tennis player. So we'll work with these images just for this demo. I'm always going to start by iterating on a transformation in memory. So I'm not going to actually push those changes to my database by adding a computed column until I know I'm happy with the transformation. So I'm going to start by iterating by simply looking at image properties. These are built into pixel table. So it includes getting the image height, the image width, and the mode. You can see I'm using t.select to set up my query. And here I'm just running it for two rows. So you can see that I'm adding those three columns to my table. Now, if I wanted to see all columns at once, I can just take out that limit and just do a collect. You can see all three of my rows now. And if I want to do a little shortcut for limit and collect, I can do head one, and this should just show us our big bear. So let's say I want to add those image properties to my table. Maybe I want to do some computations on them later on. So I'm going to add three new computed columns here. You can see that I've updated three rows. I'm going to do a t-collect, and you can see that those are all now indeed in my actual table that's stored in my database locally. So those were just grabbing some image properties out of the images. Now let's try doing some transformations. I'm going to resize a few images first, and then I'm going to apply that resize transformation to every image in my table. So I'm going to start by doing an image resize here, and I'm just going to do it on the first row. So you can see I'm just making a little smaller bear. If I want to save that to my database, I can add a computed column. And if I t-collect, you can see that my resized image is now there. And it applied to all three rows. So that's resizing. We can use rotate in a similar way. So here I'm going to rotate just the first image by 90 degrees. So we have a bear on its side. Let's say I want to do that for all rows in my table, and I want to add them as computed columns. I can add a computed column called rotated, do a t-collect, and you can see that I've got all three images turned on their sides in this new column, rotated. So we've done image properties, we've done resizing, and we've done rotating. You can also flip. Now for this one, you do need to import pill image so that you can access these flip constants because you have the option to either flip an image vertically or flip an image horizontally to mirror it. So here, let's see what those look like in action. And again, I'm just manipulating this part 
using a query. So I'm just doing it in memory. So you can see that I've renamed this column up and this column mirror. Now, if I did head, well, let's just do head three. You'll see all of them because there's only three rows right now. But again, if I show you my actual table, there's nothing there and nothing has changed so far. No flipping. We just have the resized and rotated images. So let's go ahead and add them. We'll add computed columns and then I'll do a collect. And you can see that I've made a flipped version for both vertical and horizontal for all three of my images and I've added it back to my database. So the final transformation we're gonna do is do a crop. So this one's a little bit more complicated, but I can again, crop a few images at first, test out my transformation, and then apply it to all rows in my table. So here I'm gonna preview this crop. You can see I've got kind of a center crop around the uh, center of the image. Let's do that for all four and add computed columns. And if I do a t.collect, you can see over to the right, there's my center crop for all three of my images. So how this works is that pillow operations for image manipulation are built into pixel table. These are some of the basic ones, but if you wanna use any other custom transformations that are available in pillow or other Python libraries, you can write user defined functions. So I'm gonna show you a quick example of doing that to adjust image brightness and contrast. So here I'm gonna import pixel table and I'm also going to import image enhance from pillow. Again, I'm gonna drop my directory and create a new one just for this. I'll let it run a second. And I'm gonna create a new table. This one's in the same directory image underscore demo, but I've named it enhancements. Again, a single image. And I'm gonna insert three images. And I'm gonna add a column here. So let's take a look, a little peek at which images are in this one. So we have a baseball player, we have two horseback riders, and then we have a day at the beach or a lake. So I'm gonna adjust the brightness and contrast for just a few images at first, and then I'm gonna commit those transformations to my database. So here I'm defining user-defined functions using the pixel table UDF decorator. So the first one is adjusting the brightness. I'm using image enhance here. You can see here that it's taking a brightness and an enhance factor. I'm also adjusting the contrast and adjusting the saturation. So these are just really simple user defined functions that you can apply in pixel table. And then they'll apply to the entire set of images in all the rows of your table. So I'm gonna test out the brightness adjustment. So I'm gonna execute this code chunk to define these functions. And then I'm gonna use them here. And I'm just gonna apply them to the first row. So you can see here's our baseball player. And here I've adjusted the brightness to 0.5 and then 1.5. So this is making it dimmer and this is making it a little bit brighter. So let's say I'd like to add darker and brighter to all the images in my data. Let's also do low contrast, high contrast, desaturated and saturated and see the outcomes. So I'm adding a lot of columns here. Let's look first at just the brightness levels. So same thing that you saw before with the baseball player, but now we can see it also with the horseback riders and with the day of the lake. Here we've got low contrast and high contrast. You can see again, applied to all three rows. And finally we have desaturated and saturated. So you can see this is a really quick and easy way to be able to use user-defined functions to be able to define your transformations in pixel table and apply them sort of in batch to all of the images that you wanna work with. I hope this gives you a great overview for how to get started with image processing in pixel table and check out our other recipes if you wanna see more.